Hi, my name is Jessica Stewart and I'm Head of Sustainability and Community Development for Gin and Derry. You're with us today on the Inspire podcast where we talk to experts and visionaries about how we can inspire a new way of living for a brighter future. I'd like to start off today acknowledging the country that we're recording on. We are so privileged to live, work and learn on land that our First Nations communities have had connections to for many, many thousands of years. We honour their ongoing custodianship. And today I'm joined by uh, the one and only Muhammad Ali. For those of you who live in Canberra, you know that I'm not talking about the professional boxer, but the other social activist. Muhammad Ali, the founder and president of well-known charity Helping ACT. Welcome to the show, Muhammad. Thank you very much, Jess, for inviting me. I'm just a humble servant of Canberra, as a matter of fact. Uh, uh, and I, I, I believe, <coughs> let me start it with the <clears throat> with the acknowledgement of the uh, people of the land, none of all people and others, right, who are living here for more than 60,000 years kind of thing. And one of the things which I wish to <coughs> learn from them is their resilience and, you know, uh, wonderful, wonderful country which we are living on. Thank you very much for all that. So I might start off, Mohammed. tell us exactly what Helping ACT does as a charity. Helping ACT is primarily a food security charity. It provides foods to every vulnerable in Canberra without any bias, without any discrimination. And along this side of food supply to all vulnerable completely for free, we also help in settlement of the new families in Canberra, especially refugees and asylum seekers, and also provide assistance besides food to domestic violence families or kids with having having some problem. These are the main things which we do in as, as helping ACT helper. Yeah, so tell us, Mohammed, how did you actually arrive in Canberra? <clears throat> I arrived in Canberra, as a matter of fact, uh, for higher studies. Right. Now, I did uh, some, uh, I tried, uh, you know, uh, a PhD kind of thing, which could not be completed because there was some funding problems in the end. Mm. But then I switched to my N other law, uh, love, and that was that uh, because I was teaching biochemistry in Karachi University, I used to do a pathology lab also, which was with me on contract, and I used to do all blood chemistry myself there. So I just went to, uh, you know, uh, one of the um, uh, organization, education organization, CIT, mm. and uh, did um, a diploma in, in uh, lab pathology, medical technology kind of thing, and that actually helped me find the job in Department of Health is straight away, and 23 years I was there. So yeah. I came for higher studies, yeah. got completely fallen in love with Canberra and Australians and oh, Australia, wonderful. and that's why I'm here for the last 32 years. So then biochemistry to being <laughs> now what I think we would all consider you to be is a bit of a charity champion. How did, how did that happen after you retired? Uh, Yes, it's, uh, it's a long, short story. Uh, the, I mean, I'm, I'm proud of my background. Mm -hmm. I'm, uh, we were a family of, um, you know, seven siblings, and mother died early. And father was mm, simply a clerk in one of the insurance companies. It was very really hard to meet ends. Mm -hmm. So that was, but one of the things which my dad said was, that you need not to worry anything about no matter I work 16 hours a day, but make sure that you go to uni, number one, yep. and do as best as possible. So I was proud that my return to him was that I was gold medalist from Karachi University Biochemistry, yep. right, both in BSc honors and as well as masters, and immediately found a teaching job there. Right. Now, when I started teaching, you know, if there are 30 students there, you could immediately within five minutes see that some of them are physically there only, but not mentally. Right. That was the beginning of the word charity. And we started with the help of, you know, uh, books and all that. And then uh, in, during my career of teaching, I went to one of the African countries and there I, that actually experience opened my eyes mm. because 
there was so much poverty there and that was and when i came back i said the way to go is certainly and i look back in in karachi there were areas where people were struggling and they started at a smaller level somewhere when i came here in 1991 and started job with the uh, you know department of health uh, therapeutic goods administration i made a group i made a group there some 20 people i'm so proud of them and uh, you know we we carried uh, we started charity work and uh, every year on average we'll do some ten thousand dollars out of our lunches and uh, morning teas and we'll just select and choose one of the Winnie's or Red Cross and all that mm. and we'll give the money to them. So that was actually the beginning. Yeah. So basically it is empathy and humanity, right? That you, when you see kids around or people who are struggling for food and all that, you think that they don't deserve it, you know. We mm. have to do something. And that was the beginning of the Helping ACT later on after my retirement. Yeah. And there seems to be, I think, in Australia, a, a misconception that Canberra is a well-off society. You obviously see a, a different side of Canberra in the work that you do with Helping ACT. Can you tell us a bit about that? It, I mean, <clears throat> not only Canberra. Mm. I mean, if I'm sitting... And I, if I had never come to Australia, let me put it this way, my dream of Australia was full of, you know, everything directly coming from paradise, right? And you know, people eating it, and the only thing <laughs> they have to do is keep happy and all that, yeah. right? Uh, now, when I see and I people see my own family back in Karachi, Pakistan, and my friends over there, they see a different side also. And I keep telling them that this is certainly one side only. Yeah. And you remember that, uh, I mean, uh, I, I must have shared with you that some three, four years ago when <clears throat> we went uh, as a family to San Jose, yeah. that is the world capital of IT. And you won't expect any poor people there, mm. but I could see some of the tents on the footpath there also, where people were struggling, right? Accommodation and food and all mm. that. So, I mean, in the same way, Canberra has got a side, unfortunately. Mm. And that being the most, I think, rich city of Australia, yet there are pockets. There are pockets. These pockets could be that some family may be just in transient kind yeah. of family needing some assistance or maybe that there is a disability, there is a problem. Government yeah. doesn't give enough, right? Despite doing all good efforts by the government, it's not enough for the people, right? And therefore, organizations like Helping a City came up mm -hmm. and they have to keep working. And that was actually when I started seeing because with TGA's experience, we would invite, you know, CEO of uh, Winnie's in Canberra. We would invite, you know, the development manager, community dev of uh, of Red Cross. Mm. And when they will come and they'll share their stories, that was an eye-opener. And I said that after retirement, really, I have to start something. And I'm so proud that six years ago, there was a baby born named Helping ACT. Wonderful. And tell, tell me <coughs> what Helping ACT does. You've brought in a, quite a selection of things here on the table. Tell us what, what you've actually brought in today and, and what that's for. Now, um, the, you know, Helping ACT works in five or six different areas. And basically what we call ourselves are uh, an organisation who actually provides or attempts to provide food security mm. to any family who is struggling. Now, when it comes to any family or group, we have very clear vision that we work for refugees and asylum seekers. Mm -hmm. We work for homeless people. Yep. We work for school kids uh, through their breakfast programs. Okay. And we also work for domestic violence, which is a curse in our society here. Mm. And the women which are affected, or even men, if there is any case like that, which is affected by domestic violence, we help them. And then the other day I was just reading that it is that one in 10 people in Canberra need food assistance. 
One in right? ten. One in ten. And one in six kids in Australia are in poverty. Yeah. So I was thinking that, you know, if one in ten need assistance, that means nine out of ten still can help that uh, person, one person. Yeah. And if one in six kids is poor, then five of those kids out of their pocket money, out of their parents' money, can help that one child. And that's such an important message really to, to bring <laughs> is that it's it shouldn't just be the people in need that we talk about, but that 90% of people that can help. And we've got an incredible selection of food here in front of us as part of a food pack um, that you'll be giving out to yeah. one of these families. Um, we've got lots of things in front of us. We've got some cheese slices, some, some milk, some pasta sauce, some soup, some chicken noodles, um, sultanas, and even some bickies and some extra treats as well as some coffee there as well. Um, so a really wide selection of things in these food hampers that you're able to give out during the year. You can look at the food hamper items yeah. on our Facebook and Instagram pages for Gin and Dairy. Um, you can also see the whole recording of this podcast on the Gin and Dairy YouTube channel as well. Yeah, one of the things, uh, Jess, is that, the, and that's what we are actually sending a strong message to the city government and the federal government, is that the food needs or the staples needed for each community is different. Mm. And because the makeup of refugees and asylum seekers is mostly, unfortunately, Afghani, yep. and then Middle Eastern people, mm -hmm. and now Ukraine, Ukrainian several also started, Africans are coming. So basically, we I'm on the board of Companion House also, and there is a food pantry over there, and that food pantry is exclusively topped up every week by helping a city. That food type is different to what we have to cater for, what we have to provide to Aussie Aussie families affected yeah. by domestic violence or kids in schools kind of thing. So therefore, there is a very vast kind of different varieties of food which we purchase every week and then distribute it accordingly. Yeah. What do festivities like Easter, like Ramadan, like Christmas, what extra pressure does that put on a family? Extra pressure, I mean, <clears throat> one of the things is that because of COVID, mm. they, a phase started. A phase started whereby people were struggling for, you know, food and all that, loss of jobs and all that. And there was a conception that once the COVID is gone, our problems will be resolved. Mm. Our problems will be solved, but that never happened. In fact, they aggravated. Right. They aggravated, and that means that the cost of life has gone up and mm. is continually rising up. And that has led, I mean, today the problem is that there was a, a term coined uh, last two years, two years before, they're working poor. That doesn't mean that a person is jobless. No. no. So it's still working, working maybe APS 3 and APS 4, yeah. but unable to meet if, uh, say, for example, a family with two kids kind of thing. So these are the people certainly, and because of these, all these charities, including Helping A City, and we consider, in Helping A City, we consider ourselves only foot soldiers, honestly speaking. Right. We started only four people, and now we have 44 people. And foot soldiers, why? Because Canberra is generous. Canberra keeps donating. We are a tax-deductible charity. And we, it is now on us, that trust on us, that we deliver. And yeah. delivery is not only food, but small little, you know, help in settling new families from Afghanistan, from uh, all this, there is a range of activities which are done, right, yeah. by helping the city. Yeah, so food, clothing, clothing household items household. as well. Oh, if, you, if you visit my, my <laughs> home, you will find that my wife and my daughter-in-law are busy just making fancy dresses ready for Eid festival, which yeah. is Muslims Christmas, as a, uh, because these are ladies' dresses, and obviously these, uh, you know, uh, Afghan, uh, uh, I shouldn't say Afghan only, but refugees and asylum women, women especially, mm. you know, they need it on that day because it's just like Christmas, and it's a festival, and uh, there is a tradition that you will wear fancy dresses on that yeah. day, and that's what is going on at the moment, so this is one strong side, you know. Yeah, that's and, so wonderful, and 
For people coming to you and, and that you are able to help with either a food hamper or with the, the food van that you've got as well, yeah. how does it make you feel that you're helping to fill someone's belly or that they're going away with at least a solid meal or a set of food that they can take with them? I think there are two feelings, and these are mixed feelings. One thing is the pride, and not only myself, but all the committee of Helping A Cities Pride and also volunteers, a strong 40, 45 volunteers with us now, that yes, we could do what we thought was needed. Mm. And thanks to Canberra, that enables us to do what we want to do and what is needed. And second thing is, that a kind of gratitude to the heavens that you were able to do. Because I believe, I, there was one, one wonderful sentence which I read at one of the churches, just outside the church, there was a beautiful saying that God will not descend here to help, you know. It will be from among the people who will help each other. Yeah. And that is a philosophy of all these organizations like Helping a City and others. And because of that, you feel so immense pleasure mm. in yourself that you were able to solve a problem of a mother who was anxious that what she will put in for the breakfast for the kid tomorrow, or is there enough for dinner? And you have just given that. And that is the pleasure no money can replace that pleasure and satisfaction. No. And it really is the the ultimate form of community building, right? That's very you true. Know, we are we are part of a bigger village than just our own families and, and basically basically it is that I mean when it comes to all the requirements, right? You know, uh, just that you need a house, you need this, you need this, you need that. Food is just at the bottom and the most important one. Mm. It reflects badly on any society, even if one person has slept without having dinner. And that is the driver. That is the driver that now, and I'm sure that nine of the people of Canberra are there to help, so why not ask them? And then join in the celebration that yes, there was a person who needed it, and we were able to jointly give it. Yes, because really we're only as good as our most vulnerable person. That's very you know. true. Anything can happen with yeah. anyone in life, you know. Anything can happen. I remember the days when we came early. It was a smaller scholarship, and 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 it was tense few years, right? Similarly, when we started helping a city, you won't believe that people would simply after six months they had confidence that yes, helping a city will be able to help, and they would simply say, "I remember one of the families." She actually uh, uh, um, um, uh, a refugee, and she came, and they were sleeping on the floor, and mm -hmm. it was winter time. And it was promised that, yes, we will do a bed. And one day she got so frustrated that she went, went to Ikea without telling, uh, helping the <laughs> city. And from there she phoned, saying that I have selected the bed I want with my kids, and I was so panicky, and so was Manar, who was our secretary, yeah. so panicky. And within one hour, we had to collect uh, $900, $600, $700, wow. and a straight away payoff, because that was the confidence, and that is the satisfaction after that. And I'm so proud of all my friends, right, mm -hmm. and donors, who actually just said that there's no problem. So, yes, that kind of thing, that kind of thing we can do, and I'm sure that we should do. It is a must we should do. Yeah. Um, you, you must said that Canberra is quite a giving society in I itself. Um, what about giving time and volunteering? Are you finding it harder to find volunteers? We are lucky. I, I would say that I was <laughs> talking to Vinny's the a uh, couple of months ago, then Red Cross and all that. In that sense, perhaps the reason could be why we are lucky is that Helping a City is still a small organization as compared to the big tasks which Vinnie's and Salvos and all those do, or Red Cross do. But as a matter of fact, we are lucky in the sense that we have some 40 plus volunteers. Mm. And these volunteers, one of the things which is great 
and must be mentioned here is that overheads with helping ACT are just under 5%. The reason being that no one charges for the petrol, no one charges for the for the time given. No, yeah. even, even people will run in their own cars to deliver food if the person can't come because of disability or sickness and all that. So, so I think in that sense, we are quite okay in terms of volunteers, but now with the word going out more, more people are just sending requests for the volunteers and it is i can see their faces we pack uh you know food uh, hampers every saturday in theonotara's building where we have a permanent food bank mm -hmm. and i can see always around 12 30 12 right the satisfaction and the pleasure which grows out of their of their faces once they have completed the task on that day yeah and i think that's a really good reminder that i think i first met you Black in the black summer fires, uh, oh, yeah. helping to pack food oh, hampers with slabs, slabs for, for heroes, heroes. and slabs. and even through COVID, a lot of us um, spent time volunteering and handing out food hampers. I remember doing that you know, in the car again. through that. So it's a bit of a reminder that even though we're not in crisis at the moment with the the fires or with COVID, but there's still a huge need, not just for our migrant and refugee I mean, I should call it, I should call it still a crisis. The yeah. reason being that the number of families in need is increasing in Canberra. Yeah. That's where the problem is. And it, taking you back in those days, uh, slaps for heroes, my hat's off to them. Mm -hmm. Roseanne House, right, who started it. Um, and and uh, the idea of helping a city to join hands was that at least food component and we are so proud that Helping ACT was one of three or four organizations mm -hmm. during all COVID period we were on the road. Yeah. We were on the road just delivering and in, in fact ACT Health used to give us a call mm -hmm. uh, CSD department used to give a call, multicultural department would give a call, chief ministers off and on sometimes would be in contact and they will say that look this is the house, there are some seven, eight people all our students, all our this and all that, please, please, please. And certainly I would run, my, my volunteers would run and deliver it. Yes. So it's not just the migrant and refugee communities, it's the international students, it's, the, as you said, the domestic violence affected people, people with disabilities and, and those yeah, affected by homelessness. And, and unfortunately, we've got this sort of really st a steady increase. Do you, think, do you think there will be a point where we stop increasing? Yeah, um, I think uh, first thing which uh, you reminded me that Ramadan means that we, we get very busy. I'm so proud of Chin and Dairy <laughs> that this was our fourth year at Chin and Dairy Link yeah. office whereby we did Ramadan Aftar dinner or breaking fast dinner and we actually served 200. You were there. Mm. Certainly you were part of the team who were working there. Thank you very much for doing that and thank you, Jin Dairy. So international students, when it comes to predominantly Muslims, Ramadan means that we'll give at least four dinners during the month of Ramadan. But what happens is that during the year, yeah. say for example, they're especially PhD student, they find it hard to cook. They keep coming to us silently yeah. and saying that, look, this is the period for another three months I've, and, and there's no problem. Because my hat's off to all the students who struggle during their studies, but when they complete it, they are so proud and make their parents proud and make everyone you know, in the society proud that they have completed. So for them, our hearts are open. Definitely. Wonderful. And Mohammed, I'd like to just leave with a little bit of a quote, which I think sums up the motto for, for helping ACT and what, what I think that you're trying to really establish through this by uh, an incredible Ud player, actually, Joseph Twadros, that I saw in Canberra mm -hmm. earlier this year. And he said, may your kindness and compassion show no bias. And I think what you do at Helping ACT is really help anyone that comes to your door so um, at any time of the year, at any time of day and night. So thank you so much for the work that you do for our mm -hmm. community. Um, thank, thank you for you all of the Canberrans that are donating either their time or their money to um, charity organisations sure. like Helping ACT. And if you would like to also help um, with the work of ACT, Helping ACT, and find out more about the work that Muhammad does, please get involved. 
um, you can find a link um, to the work that Helping ACT does in our show notes um, as part of this podcast. If you have been listening to the podcast but would like to see us in real life having a chat, um, you can visit us on the Gin and Dairy YouTube channel. And if you'd like to hear more about how you can contribute to a brighter future for our community, subscribe to the Inspire podcast and visit our website, ginanddairy.com. That's right. Now, thank you very much. In the end, very quickly, I, I sincerely, most sincerely from my heart, thank Gin and Dairy for coming along and help helping ACT because that co- uh, coffee van which Gin and Dairy gave us completely yeah. for free, we upgraded it again with the help of Gin and Dairy to a full food van and every month, you can see once a month, outside homeless people over here, uh, early morning center, and we do, and now we are extending our program to include South Canberra and Belconnen as well. This could not have come without Gin and Dairy being with us. Thank you very much. Gin not a problem. And so look for the orange van <coughs> with the big Helping ACT logo uh, in and around Canberra. Thanks, Mohammed. So kind of you, Jess. <laughs> <laughs>